She attended the University of New Hampshire, earning a B.S. in kines kinesiology. Outdoor education. I had to look that one up. The study of anatomy, physiology, and the mechanics of body movement. I'm going to end my introduction, shorten it up, because she's going to cover many of her accomplishments. I will say this. During her deployment to Afghanistan, she flew over 75 missions, over 200 combat hours, and helped move 80 patients under extreme environmental conditions. Along with these duties and more, she managed to complete the Commander Safety Course online and was published in an article on medevac operations. Captain Sanderson earned many awards, including the Army, meritoriously, beg your pardon, meritorious unit award, the Air Medal, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Army Reserve Accommodation Achieve Medal, and many, many more. I am honored to present Captain Rebecca Sanderson. So good morning, everyone. Everybody hear me all right? Yep. Excellent. So as Dan gave me that wonderful introduction, thank you, Dan. Um, Glad to be with you here today. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about the journey that I took getting to be a medevac pilot in Afghanistan along with that. At the end, there will be a chance for questions and a chance for you to look at some of the gear I brought with me, which we'll discuss a little bit during this presentation. So if you have any questions, please hold them to the end. You'll get a chance to get all of them answered. All right, so as Dan said, I was born and raised in East Greenbush, New York. Attended Columbia High School. I was always one of those kids who wanted to do everything. I was in track, I did theater, I did all sorts of after school clubs, and I never really stopped. Uh, ended up going to the University of New Hampshire for kinesiology. Um, outdoor education, if um, people aren't familiar, because this is something that helped me with my military career, it's the idea of experiential education, the idea of teaching using more than just your traditional teaching methods. Different people have different learning styles. We want to teach to all of those. So that's what outdoor education is about and taking people out of their comfort zone and moving them forward. And then I ended up getting a job in Rhode Island as part of an internship for school and ended up in Rhode Island and uh, joined the National Guard. So. To become an Army pilot, the first thing you got to do is you got to join the Army. <laughs> so we're going to go over a couple things, one of them being acronyms. My mother will tell you we use them all the time, abbreviations. Aviation and the Army all have their own language. I'm sure people are familiar with medical terminology. Everyone has their own. There's different things and different things. The Army is no different. It has its own language. I'm going to hit some of the basic words there. We're going to talk about basic and advanced training becoming an officer, and what you're all here for, flying. So a couple acronyms I might end up using today. A MOS is a Military Occupational Specialty. What that is, is that's someone's job in the Army. Um, it's what they're assigned to do. It's called an MOC in um, the Air Force. It kind of varies between services, but it's the basic, hey, what do you do? Basic rifle marksmanship. Hey, if you're in the Army, the first thing you are, anyone who is in the Army, is the first thing you are is an infantryman. You have to know how to shoot and move. DFAC. Hey, you were sort of in a mini DFAC this morning. It's a dining facility. AIT, Advanced Individual Training. OCS, Officer Candidate School. MRE, Meals Ready to Eat, those wonderful things they give you in the field that you look at and you go, hey, I'll trade you. <laughs> uh, Field training exercise, where well, you'll probably get given an MRE. Um, doing training out in the woods. You don't always get to stay in a nice five-star hotel. And CIF, Central Issue Facility. This is actually the place that gives you all your gear, hands out your supplies, books, equipment, etc. So, welcome to basic training. I, uh, I joined the National Guard in 2004, and I did what we called pre-basic. Um, Rhode Island has a program where they have individuals who are waiting to go to their basic training, waiting to ship out, where they come in and they drill every month, 
and they get to kind of work with drill sergeants and learn some of the stuff ahead of time so that when you get to day zero, basic training, right here, you're not quite as shocked. The individual in the hat there is what we call a drill sergeant. This guy here, you get very used to, they yell, they scream, but the idea is to get you to learn to deal with things and learn a lot of different skills. So again, lots to learn. You learn about barracks maintenance, clearing rooms, basic rifle marksmanship, BRM, shoot and move, protect each other. In the military, everything's about being a team. You never leave someone behind. You always have your teammates. You're always taking care of each other. It's one of the key things. And that's one of the key things that makes our military as effective as it is. It's not about the individual. It's about your unit. You're out there for the guy next to you. So talking about teamwork, I love this picture. So one of the things I said I, 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 said I went to school for outdoor education. Part of how we teach people in outdoor education is by putting them on challenging, challenge courses. Similar to this. This is something that I had actually done before I went to basic. But what it is, is they give you problem solving activities. Hey, you have these three boards, you have this barrel of ammunition that you have to get over here. And by the way, you can't touch the ground because if you do, it's littered with some kind of poisonous thing and you're all going to die. So you have to get everybody across. It's problem solving, but it teaches people to work together. And how to deal with stress. How many people here have been in the military at one point in time or another? What does a drill sergeant teach you how to do? They teach you how to deal with stress because they are going to be in your face, right up in there. And you need to be able to maintain your composure, maintain your calm, and still get the mission done. And this is stuff that carries over into your your final occupation, your military occupational specialty that we'll get into. Physical fitness. PT is what we like to call it. So, you have obstacle courses. You get to climb through the mud. Guess what? In basic training, they don't care if it's raining out. You're still going to be going out and doing whatever training you had for that day because guess what? When you go on a deployment, it doesn't matter what the weather's doing. You're still going to go get your mission done. You do a lot of running. Um, this picture here is actually a picture of what we call a company or a battalion run. It's supposed to build spirit of core, build group cohesion. Everybody's running together. And then you have, it's physical fitness, but it's also training, combatives. And a lot of people think, oh, they're just teaching you to fight. No, what they're teaching you to do, for the most part, actually is, hey, take care of yourself until someone else can come help you out. So you also learn about remembering. I'm going to read this out loud to you. If you are able to save for them a place inside of you and save one backward glance, when you are leaving for the places they can no longer go, be not ashamed to say you love them, though you may or may not have always. Take what they have taught you with them, they're dying, and keep it with your own. And, that time, and in that time, when men decide and feel safe to call war insane, take one moment to embrace those gentle heroes you left behind. You learn about fallen soldiers. Now, this statue here is what the equivalent of what they do in a combat zone if someone falls and they send their body home. They keep boots, rifle, helmet, and dog tags. It's a place for their comrades to be able to go and remember them becomes very important because those are your comrades, those are your friends. It's important to have someone there. Soldier's Creed. We're going to concentrate on the part that's highlighted in white here, but I know it's hard to see from back there, so I'm going to read it to you. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert, and I am professional. I stand ready to deploy 
engage and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. This is something you have to memorize when you go to basic. This is what everything's based off of. I'm ready, I'm able. The part in white is what we call the warrior ethos. Always place the mission first. You are going to get your mission done somehow. They may say, hey, you have two dogs, three boards, and a pack of gum, and you need to build a, a shelter. You're going to figure it out. And find some way to get it done. I'll never accept defeat. I'm always going to keep pushing on. I'll never quit. And for medevac, which is what I do, I will never leave a fallen comrade. We never leave anyone behind. It may take us years to get them, but we don't leave anyone behind. So I went to basic training down at Fort Jackson um, in South Carolina, and I did what we called OSET, which is one station unit training. I had my basic training and my AIT at the same location. When I enlisted, I actually enlisted as a 42 Alpha MOS, which is a human resources specialist. Now the reason I did this was I wanted to fly. Now that may sound really weird, but when I joined the National Guard, I wanted to be a flight medic. I already was an EMT at the time. And they went, well, we don't have any flight medic slots right now. So I went, well, what do you got in an aviation unit? And I went, well, we got this. And I went, okay, I'll do that. Get your foot in the door. So went to Fort Jackson, did my basic training, and I started out. And remember that first picture of the drill sergeant yelling as people get off the bus? It's what we call day zero. The idea is to intimidate people, break people down. Well, the drill sergeants noticed something. They were busy yelling at everybody. I was organizing people to get the stuff done that needed to get done. So they put me as a team leader in a squad. And then they made me a squad leader. And then they made me assistant platoon guide. And then they made me a platoon guide. They kept firing everybody. I kept going, yes, I'm going to get a break, finally. <laughs> but no. So... Did that, got a lot of training in leadership. Um, and as I said, showed you some of the pictures of some of the training you do. There's a lot of physical training, but it's also training in leadership, teamwork, working together. Next, I went to advanced individualist training. This, they relax a little bit. The drill sergeants aren't quite on top of you as much, but there is a lot of focus on attention to detail. And that's something that follows through into flying. You need to make sure your boots are polished. I was in uh, the old uniform at the time, the BDUs. Your boots had to be polished. Your clothes had to be pressed. You didn't, couldn't have any loose strings hanging off your uniform. They were watching for that stuff. And what that teaches you is it teaches you attention to detail. So when you're doing a job, you're going to make sure you get all the little steps and not just try to skip to the end. So I got back from Fort Jackson after doing my basic training in my AIT. And I went back to my unit for a while. I was with uh, DET 1 249th Med Air Ambulance at the time. I um, actually used to have it, the headquarters of that unit used to be here in New York. And I went back and I got to go on a few Huey rides. Go fly around in a helicopter a little bit. And I went, you know what? I think I like this. I think this works. I think I really want to fly one of these. So I put in a packet for OCS, Officer Candidate School. And I worked on becoming an officer. Now you're probably looking at some of these pictures and going, hey, some of these look a lot similar to basic training. So the basic training pictures I just showed you, right? Well, phase officer training is broken up into three phases. You have phase one, where you're doing a lot of your physical, let's just get in, make sure you have the soldier skills that you need to have. Phase two, where you're getting all your leadership. How do you write memos and reports and be in charge of people. In phase three, where they bring you all together again to make sure you can put it all together, show that leadership, etc. So, phase one, hey, what we were talking about it looking like basic training. We like to call phase one basic training on hot sauce. The idea of they have, um, we call them tacks, but they're um, officers who are training officers. But their whole idea in phase one is to see if they can make you quit. I didn't quit. <laughs> 